Although SpongeBob SquarePants may not be as high quality as it used to be for me personally, it's still without a doubt the most iconic show Nickelodeon has ever made. And even though I would like to talk about the good things recent SpongeBob episodes have done in depth sometime in the future, in this video I want to focus on the best season of SpongeBob, which is season 2. Okay, before anybody tries to kill me for that statement, I know comedy is subjective and not everyone has the same sense of humor as me, but you gotta admit that season 2 had the most memorable SpongeBob episodes as a whole compared to other seasons. This season had Your Shoes Untied, Shanghai, Band Geeks, The Secret Box, Wormy, Fry Cook Games, Sailor Mouth, amongst many others. Sans Undertale wouldn't sound like he does if it wasn't for something smells. Maybe it's the way you're dressed. Maybe it may, 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 may. Season 3 was very close to season 2 quality, but season 2 just had a few more of those memorable episodes that were just as funny, if not funnier, than so, you know, some of those season 3 episodes. So, season 2 of SpongeBob began airing in late October in the year 2000 with the debut episodes Shoes Untied and Squid's Day Off. About six months after season 1 aired its last episodes, which were Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2 and Hooky. Fantastic episodes, by the way. The art style of the show drastically changed from the season onward as well. The colors became a lot more vibrant in all aspects, with characters, the atmosphere, food, water, atmosphere, and characters' designs changed as well. I'm really glad the staff made these visual changes and never reverted back because that was one of my biggest gripes with season one. The way the characters slash backgrounds were colored weren't super visually appealing. The way SpongeBob, Patrick, and everybody was they were drawn nice in season one, but the way they were colored, eh. The episodes still look solid, but with SpongeBob being a happy cartoon geared towards little kids, I think this change of style made kids enjoy the show even more than before, even if they weren't aware of it. Characters felt much more expressive than before as well. These expressions were integrated incredibly well when it came to certain bits and comedic timing in some of these episodes too. For instance, in Wormy, with how characters express their fear of Wormy, Mr. Krabs and Squidward's reaction in particular were incredible. Their eyes falling out, Mr. Krabs teeth getting a little bit cracked and their underwear being left behind from the scene. That, that was the icing on the cake right there. I will say newer SpongeBob is definitely the most expressive the show has ever been, especially when it comes to the faces characters make. However, it doesn't always blend well with the comedy they're trying to go for. Take the season nine episode Face Freeze, for example. I definitely respect how well drawn these faces SpongeBob and Patrick make throughout the episode. You know, they're incredibly well drawn, but I didn't find the way these faces were incorporated into the dialogue that funny. I kind of just felt bad by the end of the episode that all their faces got destroyed, basically, especially Squidward. <laughs> Then again, I feel bad for Squidward by the end of most episodes he's been in throughout the series. So. But the best part of it all was, of course, its comedic creativity and timing with every single episode. Every single season two episode gets me to genuinely laugh at least three times while watching said episode. I'm not going to cover literally every single thing that's made me laugh throughout season two, but rather cover the things that made me laugh the most slash had the most impact on me when first watching it as a kid. First, let's talk about Squid's Day Off. The episode where SpongeBob keeps asking Squidward if he's finished with those errands. <laughs> the interactions between SpongeBob and Squidward in this episode are some of my favorite in the whole show. For instance, when Squidward had the fantasy of SpongeBob setting the Krusty Krab on fire, so he ran back and sprayed the whole dining room with a fire extinguisher. Then it shows him and SpongeBob with foam beards with a little pause of them just standing there before some SpongeBob asks, may I help you, sir? <laughs> Not recognizing Squidward at all. All those small things combined just made the, that whole part so much funnier. Plus, when Squidward was at his max insanity level, running back to the Krusty Krab naked and Mr. Krabs sees him, Mr. Krabs looked so disappointed, it was amazing. My man let his arms fall off on command to go back to the hospital because he was just, he was so done with life. He's like, well, this is what my employees are doing after I'm gone for a day. <laughs> then ending the episode with Squidward looking like a complete idiot in SpongeBob's clothing, finding out the Krusty Krab had the closed sign in the window rather than the open sign for the entire day. One of the times where Squidward taking an L was actually funny rather than painful and sorry to watch. Big Pink Loser is another great example, perfectly showing how Patrick can be dumb as hell for an entire episode without being incredibly annoying like he is in the newer seasons. His desperate attempts to be good at something slash anything so he can get an award to the point where he started doing literally everything Spongebob does was hilarious. The is this the Krusty Krab scene will forever go down as one of Patrick's best moments. The fact that he was getting legitimately pressed at these people because he thought they were calling him Krusty Krab rather than asking him for the restaurant name. The way he pouts about it after the third call too. <laughs> I love it. 
The end of the episode was also pure bliss, Patrick finally getting an award like he wanted from the start, but it's an award for doing absolutely nothing longer than anyone else. The fact that he takes pride in that award as well is what made it all that much funnier. And the last ones I'll mention here are the Secret Box slash Band Geek, since those episodes were paired with each other during their initial release. I think what I loved about the Secret Box episode so much is the way it incorporated mystery and comedy together. All through the episode, SpongeBob is trying to figure out what's inside Patrick's box, but Patrick continues to refuse to show him. Without a doubt, the best thing to come from this episode was Patrick's reasoning of not showing SpongeBob what's inside. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. And then it cuts to him thinking about a realistic garden of milk spelling out a table. It's so outlandish, but it works. Patrick trying to act all smart using words that are usually way beyond his vocabulary for him to just be thinking of spilt milk. It being real human milk makes it that much better, too. <laughs> and even with the audience not knowing what the picture of Spongebob looked like by the end of the episode, I didn't even feel dissatisfied because the episode was just that funny anyway. And of course, saving the best for last, Band Geeks. I've sung the praises of this episode more times than I can count. To this day, it's impossible for me to watch that episode without a smile on my face the entire time. For an episode to have several characters have shining slash comedic moments on top of Squidward getting a well-deserved W by the end, it's just perfection. Plankton with the harmonica, Patrick with the white sedan and the trombone. Sweet, sweet victory. Yeah. It will forever go down as the best SpongeBob episode ever made and season two was lucky enough to be the season to contain it. I think that just about does it for this video. I know I could have went on longer about what makes season two so great by talking about more episodes, but I didn't want this video to be too long. Literally every single episode from this season has very memorable, funny scenes, and if I went over all of them in this one video, I think it would have been way longer than it needed to be. Plus, I would have started getting a little too repetitive with my commentary. No need to overdo it, to be honest. Hopefully you guys like this type of video as well. With Steven Universe now over, I wanna expand my horizons some more when it comes to cartoons I talk about on this channel. I'm still nervous about it all, but I'm gonna keep giving it my all. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite episode was from season two. I would love to know your thoughts. I feel like it'll be a hard decision for most, so be sure to really think about it. <laughs> per usual, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care. Bye-bye.